I expect that almost all of you are currently using OpenAI models to power your GenAI applications and you probably also have a ChatGPT Plus subscription. However, at the moment it's actually the Google Gemini models which seem to be overtaking even the O1 models on the leaderboard. And with VO2 and ImageN3, there is also a video and image model of Google that outperformed the ones of OpenAI. And besides all of that, the pricing of the Google Gemini models also seem to be half of the GPT models. That's why today we will take a deep dive into the latest AI models from Google and try to find out whether it's time to cancel your ChatGPT subscription and start using Gemini to power your Gen AI applications. The 12 days of OpenAI have been pretty disappointing. Yes, we got Sora, but the other things were mainly stuff we already knew, such as Apple intelligence and things we already expected, like in API for the O1 models. Surprisingly, it's actually Google with their Gemini models, which are currently stealing all the show. The Gemini experimental model, which many people believe is Gemini 2, is stopping the leaderboards and also their most affordable model, Gemini 2 Flash, is coming close to the performance of GPT-4.0 and even beating the O1 models on the general leaderboard. This is truly impressive for a model which is meant to be the GPT-4.0 mini alternative of Google. So, and this week, um, Google even released Gemini Flash thinking which does inference time reasoning like O1 and you can actually try it out completely for free on their um, AI studio. Not only on the LLM front does Google seem to be slowly becoming the king. They also recently announced VO2, their AI video generator, which on their own benchmarks is destroying Sora Turbo and also Imogen 3, which seems to be out outperforming Dali. If you would have told me at the beginning of the year that by the end Google would be the one with the highest performing LLMs, I wouldn't have believed you. Which is honestly a bit surprising, as Google was actually the one who in 2017 um, invented the transformer architecture, which is used in all these LLMs. And even they were caught by surprise when five years later in 2022, ChatGPT released, uh, was released. And as ChatGPT could give back answers directly instead of giving you a page full of links and advertisements, a code threat was issued at Google and uh, Gen AI was viewed as an existential threat to their search monopoly. Even the founders of Google, uh, Larry and Sergey, came out of retirement actually to get back at Google and help them compete against OpenAI. And in my eyes, um, this was kind of surprising that Google uh, wasn't there when uh, ChatGPT was launched with their own model. As Google in my eyes was always the AI company and Google DeepMind had released exceptional AI projects such as AlphaGo, which uh, could uh, defeat the highest ranked Go player by using deep reinforcement learning. They also had AlphaStar, which could do the same, but then on StarCraft. And they even released AlphaFold, which could predict the structure of proteins and even won the Nobel Prize of this year. With all that in mind, I was expecting Google to absolutely dominate Gen AI as well. However, the first LLM they released to the public, which was BART, was a true disappointment. I tried it out myself and compared to ChatGPT, it was just falling short. Even the, uh, even the UI was something I wouldn't like and I would only resort to BART when, as my last, measure, as my last uh, hope when ChatGPT was down. So of course BART got mixed reviews and to forget the whole drama, Google decided for their next uh, multimodal LLM to just drop the BART name and call it Gemini. However, not much later, in February of this year, users started to notice that Gemini was actually generating very historically inaccurate pictures and the inclusivity parameters of the model just didn't seem to be tweaked very well. This also resulted in a shaky stock price, so things weren't looking very well for Google on the Gen AI front. 
However, in the second half of this year, Google really started to learn from their mistakes. First off, users could decide for themselves how much safety and, censors and censorship they desired from the models, which increased the usefulness of their models for developers like me and also put the responsibility of censorship back on the users. And also the base models themselves improved with Gemini 1.5 Pro and Flash being competitive with GPT-40 and GPT-40 Mini and are now available at half the price of those models. But with the recently announced Gemini 2, Gemini seems to be leaving the OpenAI models behind in the race. Not only can these Gemini models natively take in multimodal inputs and outputs, even things such as videos, which the OpenAI models can't handle, the Gemini experimental model, which is rumored to be Gemini 2, is at the top of all the uh, human evaluation leaderboards and even outperforming the O1 models on hard reasoning tasks such as coding, which is truly impressive. Besides that, the GPT-40 mini competitor, uh, Gemini 2 Flash, is even competing with GPT-40 itself. And if the pricing of these models stays the same, then Gemini 2 Flash will be half the price of GPT-40 mini and actually outperforming GPT-40 for some uh, workloads. So if this becomes true, I will definitely be switching my workhorse uh, AI from uh, GPT-4 or Mini to Gemini to Flash. Not only are all these benchmarks very impressive, I also found it insane that the Gemini 2 models are not trained with NVIDIA chips, but actually with Google's own TPUs. So Google seems to be the only foundational model developer besides Amazon who doesn't depend on NVIDIA chips to train their models. An interesting thing to notice is that Google hasn't confirmed yet whether the Gemini model topping all the leaderboards is Gemini 2 or Gemini 2 Pro. My bet is actually that it's just Gemini 2 and is meant to bait out OpenAI, which is expected to release GPT 4.5 at the last day of this 12 days of OpenAI but that uh, Gemini 2 Pro is actually even more impressive and will be released right after OpenAI overtakes their Gemini 2 model to just get the top spot back again right away. But the rise of uh, Google Gen AI doesn't stop there, as a few days ago Google also announced VO2 and Imagen3, which are video and image generation models, um, in my last video I tried out OpenAI's Sora, but honestly I was a bit disappointed as I found it very hard to generate what I wanted and also the physics were just very bad. And although I can't test VO2 myself, the videos I find from it online seem very impressive. And also in the internal testing that Google has done, uh, the VO2 model outperforms Sora both on human preference and prompt adherence. The thing I did test out though was Imagen3 and I was honestly astonished of how good this was. A few weeks ago I needed to generate some AI images for a presentation I had to do at work and I found it very hard to make Dali accurately generate pictures which um, represented what I described. And I also needed to generate multiple pictures in the same style and this took way too many attempts to do this. But when I try out Imogen3, it seems to be able to adhere to my prompts and do all of it what I want perfectly. And the best thing is, you don't even need a subscription to try it out. I often find it very hard to let an AI generate exactly what I want, as I find it difficult to write down in text um, what kind of image that I want and that's why Google also recently released uh, Whisk which is an experimental image generator powered by Imogen3. And with Whisk you can select a subject, a scene and a style and for each of these elements you can um, use a prompt to generate an image or upload an image of yourself and Whisk will then take these three images to create the final image. 
and I was really impressed by how good it was at generating these anime aesthetics. Something I really struggled uh, with when using DALI. And also afterwards it was really um, insane how precisely I could edit these images. Imogen seemed to perfectly understand what I wanted to edit and in the future I'm definitely looking forward to replacing my entire DALI workflow with Imogen 3. Something else uh, that was released a while back but I didn't know that existed was this music effects which seems to be a Suno alternative, so an AI music generator of Google. And although this was released a while back, I found it pretty cool. So in conclusion, Google seems to be really turning up the heat and I would recommend you to follow their model releases very closely. If OpenAI doesn't quickly release some new models or brings down the price of their API, I can definitely see myself switching to Gemini models. The API of these Gemini experimental models is also completely free, although with some rate limits, so I would recommend you to try it out for yourself and see if Gemini can power your application. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about these new Gemini models. I hope you enjoyed the video and see you in the next one.